Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to the Kia Hyundai channel. My name is Gabby. My name's Mike. Mike. <laughs> <coughs> and today we're gonna go through a walkthrough of this beautiful 2023 Hyundai Santa Cruz Ultimate, but there's a twist. Can you guess what it is? Mike, can you guess? It's one of the employees' cars. One of the employees. The owner's vehicle. The owner's vehicle. So if you guys have been around this week, you know on Tuesday we filmed one of our new sales people salesperson's um, beautiful Hyundai Veloster N, which is extremely modified. And I'm happy to say that although this may not have such extreme mods, there's definitely some twists that our um, owner of our Brantford Hyundai dealership has put onto this vehicle that make it truly special. And you can do it too for your Santa Cruz. Yes. So I always like to start off our videos by explaining that we have a very long intro. So if you're watching this in the future and want to get into the walkthrough, skip to around the three or four minute mark. That's when we'll actually start going through the vehicle. But in the meantime, if you're live, you're stuck with us. So let's go through it. We do these videos every weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we do them for three different reasons, and I'll have Mike explain those reasons. All right, all three, let's go. All three. Okay, <laughs> if you own a Hyundai or a Kia vehicle and you wanna learn more about your vehicle, anything from exterior, safety, convenience, technology, uh, this is the channel to be at, mm -hmm. right? If you follow us and you're familiar with us, we have well over a thousand, two thousand something videos, reviews of vehicles, and uh, this is your one-stop shop to learn everything about your vehicle. Number two, if you are in the market to buy a vehicle and you haven't, or you have but slightly, or haven't considered Hyundai or Kia um, as a selection, we definitely would love you to add it to your selection list. Mm -hmm. Compare it to different vehicles, and again, this is a place where you'll find every and anything you need to know about the vehicle. Number yep. three, if you're ready to buy a Kia or a Hyundai and you live in Ontario, why not buy from us? We have three locations. We're here at Brantford Kia, We've got Brantford Hyundai down the street, and up north we've got Owen Sound Hyundai. We'd love to help you out, love to continue the process that you started here and get you in the vehicle um, that suits you best. All right, I first off see a comment that I'm just gonna quickly remove because it's a little strange. Um, but that's one of the beauties of doing these videos live in real time. Yeah, I read that comment. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna read it out loud. You guys are able to ask us questions, leave us comments in real time. Hopefully they're appropriate. Usually they are. Um, but this is great because we get to see what you want to know about the vehicle we're filming about in real time. Now, towards the end of the video, around the uh, 30 minute mark, or you, no, I would say 25, 20 minute 25, mark, 20. is when we'll start our Q&A, and that's when we'll go through all those questions and see what you'd like to know. Moderator's on fire, yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, I think we'll get into the walkthrough now. Yes. So I'll start off with all the basic things that come in, I guess not basic at all, because this is the ultimate trim, but we'll go through everything that's included in the Santa Cruz. Let's and we'll it. highlight the additions he has, just a couple, but yep. enough to make this car look a little bit different, a little more spicy, and a little more aggressive. Very spicy. All right, so starting off with the front grille, this is one of my favorite things about the Santa Cruz. If you're looking at it head on, it's just a Tucson, right? Right? Wrong. Let's see. <laughs> so <laughs> this vehicle has an emphasis on SUV refinement, but truck-like versatility. You can do so much with this vehicle, but you can also hop in the cabin, have all those creature comforts, have heated seats, ventilated seats, all your safety and security systems, and be happy. But then you get to the back and you can do whatever you want. Yes. Go camping, you can go fishing. There's so much you can do with this vehicle. I'm gonna quickly turn on the lights so I can show you our beautiful LEDs. So this vehicle is equipped with a full LED headlight system. And similar to the Hyundai Tucson, it also has our hidden daytime running lights. So I like to call them almost an angel wing-like yes. uh, design. So that's gonna be these four rectangular lights here. Um, and during the day, those will be, again, your daytime running lights, so they'll be on. However, when you first turn your vehicle on, or when it's off, I guess, you don't see those are lights at all. It just mm -hmm. looks like pieces of your grill. It's so seamlessly incorporated into the design of the vehicle. I think it's fantastic. But now onto more functionality. For our headlight system, this is an LED projection headlight. It is extremely bright, almost blinding to other drivers. But this is very, very helpful if you are doing a lot of country or dark nighttime driving. You can see everything on the road. And if you do turn on your high beams, I was about to say headlights, um, it will have its high beam assist on. So what that means is if another vehicle is approaching you head on, maybe not head on, but <laughs> that'd be really alarming. Get out of the way. <laughs> not head on, but in the um, opposing other lane. lane yeah. Opposing lane, there we go. I'm having a day today. <laughs> it's gonna temporarily shut off your high beams and just incorporate your regular headlight system until that vehicle passes and then I'll turn your high beams back on again. So very, very smart. Um, nothing worse than blinding another driver. 
Now also while we're on the topic of the front end, again, I'll have Mike get a little closer. We'll take a nice look at the dark chrome elements that are infused in your grill. Beautiful, very, very large Hyundai emblem. And just below that, you'll see we have a front camera. So on the ultimate trim level, you're gonna get a full 360 camera on your vehicle. One in the front, one in the rear, and two on the sides, which I'll show you in a second. When you put your vehicle into reverse, or if you're parking it, you'll get a full view of everything that's around your vehicle, making it very easy to see if you're in the right spot and uh, that you're not too close to the vehicles beside you. I really love that feature, and the cameras are super crystal clear. Also incorporated into the front, we have our radar plate here. So this is gonna monitor the distance of the vehicle ahead of you and warn you for things like maybe a potential collision. You'll get an alert or an alarm inside your cabin to let you know that there is a risk of a forward collision. And if you fail to react to that warning and the risk of a collision greatens, your vehicle will actually emergency brake for you, avoiding said collision. Count how many times I said collision. <laughs> It's a lot. <laughs> All right, so great safety features are standard on the Santa Cruz, but also some amplified ones in the ultimate trim level that we have here today. So we mentioned that our owner did a couple things to this vehicle. Let's talk about them. So for our wheels, you can see we have Falcon Wild Peak all-terrain tires. These are actually four season tires. So if you are living somewhere like Canada, where we have lots of different weather types, especially here in Ontario, these are great tires have. Um, I didn't get the opportunity to drive this specific Santa Cruz yet, but Mike did. How would you rate the noise from these tires? Because obviously a tire like this will be a little bit more noisy. I'll tell you something from the inside. I, I don't hear the noise okay. like at, at that point. I can't tell you that I had the window down and drove it at all. Yeah. Um, but I, if I don't hear it from the inside, yep. you know, with the radio, with the music off, then, you know, I, I, they're a bit noisy, but not enough that I go, oh, they're noisy. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. But they um, do, I mean, the look of them, I think with with a Santa Cruz, the look of them, it, it does change the vehicles yeah. subtly and noticeably. It looks much more, I hate using this word, but rugged. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, now around the vehicle, you can see we have this plastic molding. Um, of course, this is great, again, for Canadian w weather, Canadian winters, where we have lots of salt and just general stuff on the road. I wanna say crap on the road. Yeah. Um, very easy to clean your vehicle. You don't have to worry about scratching your paint and you have that nice protective barrier. And then also, I love pointing this out cause it's just fun. Little Easter egg, we have a Santa Cruz incorporated into that design as well. Um, I did mention the tires. Now let's talk about these wheels. So these are not the standard wheels that come on the Santa Cruz, although the standard ones are absolutely stunning. These are 17 inch alloys made by Fast Wheels, which is partnered with Hyundai and Kia. Mm -hmm. um, they offer a bunch of great designs and styles, depending on what you're looking for. They don't just have off-road ones. They have sport ones as well too, just some nice sleek um, wheels. So to say tires. <laughs> All right, now moving on to the sides, I did mention that we have that full 360 camera system and your side cameras are incorporated just on your mirrors right over there. You also have blind spot detection, meaning that this little icon will be illuminated when there is a vehicle in your left or right blind spot. Now, another benefit of that blind spot camera is every time you turn your turn signal on, whether to go left or right, whether you're merging lanes or making a full left or right turn, you're gonna get a live camera feed on your gauge cluster showing you just what is in your blind spot. This is also great for parallel parking, mm -hmm. especially with nice wheels like this. You do not want to give them any curb rash. All right, and another thing that was recently added for 2023, or maybe 2022, I forget. We've been 23, 2023. We got our side steps. So these beautiful black side steps also translate to the rear doors. I think they look great. They are functional. Um, one thing with me is, especially when I wear heels, I always feel like when I get out of the vehicle, I tend to miss the step. I forget that they're there, so I don't aim for them, but you probably won't have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and now moving on to, again, my favorite part of this vehicle. I I feel like I've said that so many times already, but the bed is truly something spectacular. So all the features I'm gonna go over today on this bed in the Ultimate Trim are standard on the Santa Cruz. So you can get the entry level preferred and have all these fantastic features. First off, we'll talk about the bed itself. So we have a beautiful composite lining, very easy to clean and it is waterproof. We also have LED lights back here. So at nighttime, these lights are going to be very, very bright, illuminating the entirety of your rear bed. It is a soft open as well, so let's open it. You can control it from the key fob or by reaching in right underneath your Hyundai, Hyundai emblem, I should say, <laughs> and pressing it, it'll open. On the back here, we do have a bunch of side steps. Each one can hold up to 440 pounds. 
So you got one here and then one just above right over there. Probably should lift this again. Ooh. Oh, got it. All right, and then one in the very center. If you look at the center one, it does have another little hidden Santa Cruz. You can see this vehicle is also equipped with the hitch. It is rated to tow 5,000 pounds. And by saying 5,000 pounds, I just realized I didn't talk about the horsepower and torque specs. So under the hood is a 2.5 liter four cylinder turbocharged engine with an eight speed dual clutch transmission with paddle shifters, really fun to drive. 281 horsepower, 311 pound feet of torque. All right, now we'll get into the bed. All right, so sidestep. Every time I film the Santa Cruz, I realize I'm wearing heels, which probably aren't the best, but we're gonna make it work. <laughs> All right, right over here is our tonneau cover. So it is very easily slidable and retractable. Pull it like this to whatever position you want, locks into place, push this handle forwards, it'll slide back with a gentle push, and it tucks away neatly into that canister there, so out of your way. It also holds up to 220 pounds, so if you have to tie up anything on top of here, you can to make sure it's tied on tight. Speaking of tie downs, there are six tie down points back here, and you have this rail and cleat system, which is very easy to use. Give it a twist and slide it to whatever position you want, then tie down whatever cargo you have with you. On the sides, like shuffling back here so awkwardly, mm -hmm. we have some storage. Probably should go to the other one because yes. that one has our cover there. So you can pull this out. And like I mentioned, everything here is waterproof so you can easily wash down your bed after a muddy day. Then you also have a plug in here. So an outlet, you can see it's a regular household outlet. It's a tailgate special. Tailgate special, there's a lot back here. All right, and then speaking of the tailgate special, Mike, I'm gonna have you show one of your favorite things in this vehicle. Yes. Tell me is, what you do with it. This is my most favorite feature of this vehicle. Anytime I have an event, uh, I'm going fishing, I have to go anywhere where there's a cooler and I can back my car up, I take advantage of this built-in cooler, which has a drain too as well. So and pack it up with ice. This underbed storage is great for a lot of things. Men Mike mentioned it is watertight, meaning you could have yeah. ice in there or liquid liquids in there. Yeah, it's a cooler. Um, but yeah, you can use it as yeah, storage. It's too. a cooler. But here's my other thought. I don't know. Let's say you went on a very muddy adventure and you have dirty boots. You don't uh, want to put them in the cabin of your vehicle. Toss them in there. When you get home, you can take them out and then rinse that completely. It's all good. You don't have to worry about anything. If you put that in your cabin, might be a little bit of a different situation. Now, the opposite thing is putting something clean in here and then getting your bed very dirty. So I don't mm -hmm. know if you have a trip to the dump, lots of yard waste, your bed's full of it. You don't want to get something else dirty. Tuck it in there. You can keep things dirty, you can keep things clean, you can keep things separate. It's all very nice and tidy. <laughs> now, um, since Mike has opened this, you can see our LED lights turned on. And the position of this light is exceptional because it actually shines into this area yeah. here. So if you're opening this at night, you can still see inside. It's not blocked out, which is perfect. Um, we do have an additional accessory. Yes. It's not on right now, you but I'll have to- You want me to get this done? Yeah, I'll okay. have to talk about so, it. Another thing that he has on this is a bed extender. So this is very easy to put in. <laughs> as I put it in, I think I have it upside down. Oh no, it's the same way either way. All right, nice. guys, I'm gonna put this in. So it very easily just clips into the back here. Is it very easy? Did I get it in? There we go, sorry. You gotta put it up a bit there so it goes into the joint. Very easy, it just goes like this. And it slides. Nice and easy. Okay, and you can clip it in right here to just basically that clip that would usually attach this to the to the back and it just, there we go. Secure it. This clips in nicely. And there you go. You got a little bit extra bed. Yes. Super nice. Super so that's easy. one of the additions. <laughs> All right, and then styling. I absolutely love the look of the Santa Cruz. I love how rugged yet refined it looks. I know I've already said that. But seriously, it looks futuristic, it looks modern, it looks fun, it's not a boring vehicle to look at. And then you have that added functionality of just being able to throw whatever mm -hmm. you want back in the bed, take what? it on adventures. I've taken it to the drive-in and it's fantastic. Not to mention this vehicle is a lot of fun to drive. So we'll hop into the driver's area. Michael, Be have you join me here? Before I do that, let me show oh. the mud flaps because they are an addition to as well. These are Rally Armor mud flaps. All right. 
So before I hop in, I'll have Mike show the inside. With the Ultimate, you do get these beautiful leather seats. You have an eight-way powered driver seat with lumbar support. The two front seats, so driver and passenger, are also heated and ventilated, meaning that these hot black leather seats are not going to scorch your bum on a hot summer's day. And in the winter, you'll have toasty buns. <laughs> I don't like how I said that. <laughs> You've also okay. got your favorite design in here, same thing as the Tucson. Yes, so that beautiful sleek line that translates all throughout the cabin and also incorporates your air vents when you get into the area of the center screen. Now for technology and creature comforts, we do have a Bose premium sound system. If you're unfamiliar with this channel, if this is your first video, you know every time a car has a Bones, Bose. Bose. Bose sound system. I always want to talk about it because I think it's the best premium sound system that Kia or Hyundai offers. It's really, really good. All right, we also have an express up and down window for both the driver and passenger. This also offers you with obstacle detection, meaning that if your passenger has their arm out the window and you go to close it, it'll sense their arm and drop the window back down. No chopped limbs today. <laughs> All right, <laughs> so I'm going to quickly hop in. Very, very comfy seats, I will say. I love it. Um, on our left side over here, we have some controls. So we got our brightness adjustment here, which will quickly allow me to change the brightness of my main cluster. I also have my button for my jellyfish launcher. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Those are for your truck light beds. You can turn them on, turn them off. You can't do it while you're driving to blind people behind you. It's only while stationary, by the way. That was one of my first questions when I learned about truck bed lights. I'm like, whoa, can you turn those on while you're driving? <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> All right, and then to the right, we have our traction control. Just quickly shut it off. Light stock right over here on the left side of the steering wheel. And like I mentioned earlier, it's an eight speed dual clutch transmission with paddle shifters. So if you want a more fun, spirited, or into the vehicle drive, you can quickly adjust your transmission with these paddle shifters. Lots of fun um, and very, very responsive. For the steering wheel itself, it is heated and leather wrapped, extremely comfortable. And again, if you've seen our videos before, you know anytime we're filming a Hyundai with a wheel like this, it's the best steering wheel in the market right now, seriously. <laughs> um, super comfy, very easy to drive with. Not that most steering wheels are hard to drive with, but I think you'll really appreciate this one. On the left side, we have some media controls and just personal voice command controls. So our voice assistant, our volume control, phone button, favorite button and mode to cycle between your different media modes. On the right side, we have some driver assistance. So like I mentioned earlier, this vehicle is equipped with all those safety and great features of a modern SUV. Uh, <laughs> I'm reading some of the comments mm -hmm. right now. Oh my goodness, okay. On the top right over here, we have our smart cruise control. So if you quickly turn it on, you'll press this button, set your speed with this toggle here, and then set your following distance with this bottom button. Hyundai comes with four preset distances, so from closest to furthest. However, it'll work all the way up until stop and go traffic, and will keep you at a very, very safe distance from the car ahead of you, and then bring you back up to speed as things move again. I live in Hamilton and work in Brantford. I run into a lot of traffic. I got this in my car, and it's fantastic. It's so, so seamless, so smooth, and really lets me chill out sometimes. <laughs> all right, and then on the left side, we have our steering assistance button. So when you give this a push, it's gonna illuminate a light on your dash. You can see it right over there. Oh. <laughs> oh, the white, the white light there. Oh. This is do you want me to do yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, this okay. is getting tough. <laughs> Sorry guys, sorry for the motion sickness. But that light right over there will illuminate when this feature is on and essentially your camera that's located right over here that watches the lanes ahead of you is going to adjust your vehicle steering for you. So if there's a curve of the road, you best believe the Santa Cruz is gonna take that curve for you. It's gonna be with you every step of the way. You do have to keep your hands on the wheel, but it will take corrective action. Let's say something fell on the road. There's something, I don't know, like a recycling bin yeah. on the road. You can still give your personal input and the vehicle will listen to you. So it's not gonna completely take over. And when it turns from white to green, that's when, that's it's, active. when it's active. All right. Now for the cluster itself. This is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've never seen it with these cubed. Yeah, he's he changed. He uh, he likes that look. It's very different. Okay, mm -hmm. this this looks awesome. So our speedometer and tachometer are, of course, displayed on the dash. You can see um, we've got in a very futuristic design. You can obviously change them. Yeah, right? you, you can so play you around with it. So you have different options to so make that. it look yeah more traditional. Um, but this is a ten and a quarter inch display. Very informative. You can see our mileage on the vehicle. It is driven, of course. You can also see our fuel consumption and then our distance to empty. Speedometer is on the left, tachometer is on the right, but we got our door open message. That's super annoying, but 
I'll show you what else you can do with the screen. So by pressing this button here, it'll allow you to cycle between your different menus. So you can see our digital speedometer, our drive info, so what the fuel consumption's like, or what <laughs> the owner of Brantford Hyundai's fuel consumption is yeah. like. <laughs> you can see he's a very efficient driver. <laughs> One more time, you can see our compass, as well as our all-wheel drive torque distribution and our tire pressure. Moving on to the center screen, this is again another 10 and a quarter inch display. However, this is a touch screen. So very easy to use. I think Hyundai has a great system interface, making it very user friendly, but also very nice to look at. Um, it has built in navigation. You can do a full screen or you can split the screen. It also shows you points of interest and you have a beautiful navigation menu that shows you, shows you, <laughs> shows you all these categories. Uh, so you can quickly press whatever it is you're looking for. This is great if you are somewhere with no cell service, so you can't use your phone or your Google Maps. It works seamless. Just below that, we have some screen type buttons. So these are not physical buttons. However, they do give you um, feedback when you do press them to let you know you did hit the button. <laughs> so climate control is down here. You have automatic climate control and manual. So you can manually select your fan speed and your temperature. You also have a dual zone climate, meaning that your passenger can have their temperature set to something separate if you guys are feeling a little bit different. I'm gonna turn that off because it's super noisy. Uh, while we're still in here, I'll show you a couple things you can do on the screen here. Sorry, I'm going back and forth, but there's this feature called quiet mode, which means the speakers in the back of the vehicle. If you have kids, little ones, pets that don't wanna listen to whatever it is you're listening to, that will mute it in the back. Under setup is where you can play around with some of your driver assistance features. So like your highway drive assist, your forward collision avoidance. You can play around with how sensitive it is. If it's a feature you want or don't want, all you have to do is press it and it unclicks. You can always go back and change that. So you, there's nothing you can do on this menu that will mess up or screw up your vehicle. You can always go back and make changes. So forward safety, this is your collision avoidance. If you're not a fan of it actually having the capability break for you, you can have it just be on warning or only or you can shut it off completely, leave it back on. All right, blind spot, and then same with your steering assistance. You can really play around with it and make this vehicle yours. All right, now down at the bottom, this is kind of an awkward angle because of the uh, gear lever. But you can see we have a little bit of blue illumination. This vehicle is equipped with ambient lighting, as well as a USB, a 12 volt in the center, then a USB on the right for charging, Right down here is a slot for a wireless phone charger, so you can quickly drop your phone in there if you didn't bring a cord with you, and then your phone will charge no problem. Traditional gear shift, which I quite like. Cup holders and the key. Let's do a quick view of the key. Lock. I think this is the only Hyundai Ultimate model you, you have a shifter in. Oh, sweet. Yeah, because everything shift by wire. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I really do like the, um, the traditional gear shift. All right, so lock, unlock, a button for your tailgate. I was about to say tail bed, what? <laughs> um, a panic button and then remote start all integrated onto this very, very nice key fob. It's a very sleek key fob. Put that back in there, nice and safe. Just below that, here's where you can really play around with the drive of your vehicle. So under drive, if I use this toggle, I can cycle between my different drive modes. So there's normal, sport mode, and smart mode. Normal is just your average day-to-day -day driving. It's not gonna be overly peppy, but it's definitely not sluggish. <laughs> Sport mode is gonna change that and stiffen up the steering and make this vehicle a bit more responsive to input on the gas pedal. It's gonna take off a bit quicker. It's gonna be a little bit more fun to drive and it's gonna consume a little bit more gas, <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> All right, now we move it down one more and we are in smart mode. Now smart mode adapts to whatever it is you're doing. So if you're taking it easy, on the city streets, it's gonna be fuel efficient. It's not gonna be overly peppy. If you slam on the gas to pass somebody or to get onto the highway, whatever you gotta do, it'll temporarily switch you into sport mode and it'll cycle between all the drive modes. And it's the responsiveness is instant. Like yes. when I put it in smart mode, I don't, it's, it's so fast. It's not like you see it pause for a second and switch into sport mode, yeah. it just knows. It's not hesitant to switch. All right, I don't know if you guys saw that, but I put it into terrain mode and now in terrain mode, I can cycle between snow, mud and sand. So what does this do? It optimizes traction in conditions where there may be a little bit of slippage. Slippage. <laughs> slippage. All right, so this vehicle does have Hyundai's H-Track all-wheel drive system. It will adjust as needed if it senses a little bit of change on in the drive. So if I drove onto a gravel road from nice pavement, it will sense that change and it will adjust the all-wheel drive system as needed. But if I'm in deep snow or mud 
or sand even. It will play around with our electronic stability control, all-wheel drive torque distribution, just the way the vehicle is operating to give you optimal traction. All right, now that that's out of the way. <laughs> I've driven one on sand, actually. Have you? Like on a, on a beach, yeah. Like legally, not illegally. Yeah. I was bringing over supplies. Anyways, yeah, very fun. Not fun to clean after. But no. But very fun to drive uh, on the beach, yeah. Sand in the car <laughs> is the worst. All right, and then we also have auto hold, which holds you at a complete stop when fully depressing the brake. An electronic parking brake. Our park view camera, which when you give it a press, it'll show you. This is a super weird super weird look because the bed's down um, but we have our rear view camera as sure. well as our lift it. 360 view i think mike's gonna go lift it to make it normal hold on i get it oh never mind it's okay <laughs> right. nope i got it i just have to push the button so the bed extender there we go so now that's a more traditional view that's our hitch view our backup view and then our side cameras so you can take a look at the full 360 or you can see an exact spot that you need a view of. All right, I mentioned heated and ventilated seats. Here are your controls for it. So left is ventilation or far right for the passenger. Then we got heat and then we got our heated steering wheel. Super easy to use. Up here we have our Hyundai Blue Link buttons. So you have t Hyundai Blue Link telematics with this vehicle, as well as LED interior lights that are very, very bright. Center of control in the very center for our wide sunroof. And that's about it for features up here. There's definitely a lot more integrated with this vehicle. So if you'd like to see a technology review of an ultimate Santa Cruz, let us know. But in the meantime, let's move to the back and see what space is like back there. All right, oh, our lights are back on, nice. There we go. I guess I was standing very still. All right, so back here, I have my driver's seat much further than how I'd usually sit as a driver. So let's see what leg room's like. I'm 5'3 for reference, so not the tallest, but I do have long legs, so sitting completely normal. This is what leg room would look like. I still have a couple inches of space between my knees and the back of the seat. The seat itself does come equipped with these mesh pockets that are very, very stretchy. And the backs of them are plastic, so super easy to wipe down and clean. Um, super shoe stain friendly. <laughs> and that seat is adjusted to someone that's just about, I think, just over six feet. So. Oh, just over six yeah, feet? Yeah. Okay, so, so. That, that's a fairly good amount of room, yeah. actually. Now, one thing I love about this vehicle is the middle seat is very, very wide. Uh, some of our other vehicles, the middle seat, honestly, it's barely a seat. This, I could sit here for a pretty long road trip and not complain, as long as whoever I'm sitting beside isn't too annoying <laughs> but a good amount of space here headroom wise i think the santa cruz does really really well i have quite a few inches of space between my head and the roof i will say it's definitely darker back here but i think that's also because of the tints yes uh, there's definitely some darker tints on here now the seats themselves they do fold up so if you're not using this for a passenger vehicle and more so cargo here, i got can, it from the oh, side here so perfect. there's a little lever you pull it here and that goes up so All you've right. got some storage underneath that seat too when you put it up yep and then you have your gear for your spare tire. The spare tire is actually located underneath the vehicle itself. If you're ever in need of your spare, that's where you'll find it. Let us know if you want a spare tire video. <laughs> that, that would suck. <laughs> but back here we have, again, our LED lights, two USBs in the very center, and rear air vents for your passengers. So everyone back here would be very happy. Another cool thing I love, and again, very truck-like, is we have our back sliding window here. That's, yep. my, that's my doggy window. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> my dog would hate that, but some dogs, I don't know, they just love it. Yeah. So if your dog is a normal dog, they might <laughs> enjoy that. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll also have Mike show the cup holders on the side. And that's about it for the back of the Santa Cruz. Okay, we'll answer some questions. I See? love the color. Oh, and I honestly beautiful. love love his rim tire combo. Yeah. Like it just changes the look of it subtly, but noticeably. Um, I will mention, because I don't think I spoke about what comes standard on the Santa Cruz, but from factory, you will get 20 inch alloy wheels. They're all black with regular all season tires. And then these, of course, are 17 inch alloys with yes. wild peak. I keep saying wild track, wild peak yeah, tires. Falcon, Falcons. 
Um, let's see. I know a lot of people want to see this vehicle as a plug-in hybrid, and so do I. I think it would be exceptional as a plug-in. Mm -hmm. I, there's no news on it yet. No, though. we literally asked Hyundai at the auto show <laughs> trying to get information on it and they were just tight-lipped. Mm -hmm. You can just check that video out. When was that month? How long ago was that? That was in February. February. So you can yeah. go back in time on our video timeline and check out the questions we asked them about the, uh, the Santa Cruz and what's coming up next with Hyundai. Mm -hmm. A lot of um, mentions of the Subaru Baja. I definitely see it. Um, this is way cooler. Yeah. But the Bajas are pretty cool too. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Bose System Rocks. Kind of has the shape of a Subaru Brat. Yeah, Brat, Baja, all of that. Everyone, they always say that. Uh, would Brantford Kia hold a vehicle for a $1,000 deposit for five weeks? I found my Sportage, but I won't be back in New Jersey for five weeks. I'm having issues. That's a you question. Well, so <laughs> we wouldn't be able to sell it to you anyway because you're in the States. Wait, we I think... NJ, New Back Jersey. in New Jersey yeah. for five weeks. That's oh, I won't be back in New Jersey. I thought New Jersey to here. I thought mm -hmm. you were in New Jersey now and you actually live here. Mm -hmm. So no. Um, a lot of people said hello in the beginning. So hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Yep. I love talking about the Santa Cruz. It's always a fun video. Yeah, yeah. And I always feel like there's so much more to speak about. But so this video is not an hour long. We'll condense it a bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've mentioned this in every Santa Cruz video, but fun fact, I know people have seen the Tucson on the road before the Santa Cruz, but the Tucson was actually designed off of the Santa Cruz. The <laughs> Santa Cruz was designed first, and then they matched it up. Um, just because you said that, I just saw Ryan's comment, it's a mullet. Business in the front, party in the back. So true. That's. I'm going to retitle this video, is it a mullet? <laughs> yeah, is it a mullet vehicle? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, the like number is embarrassing, folks. That's what Dale said. And let's see where we're at. We're at 58 likes right now. And how many people are on? 104 people are on. So half half like. The math isn't mathing. If you guys are on right now and you're liking this video so far, or even if you don't like it, please just lie to me and tell me you are. Um, the like button really helps us grow our channel and helps us reach new viewers who, again, may be in the market for Kia Hyundai. Mm -hmm. Maybe they just like listening to us talk. I yeah, don't know. Maybe. <laughs> but it, we'd really appreciate it. Um, Vinny said, I'm going to buy the Hyundai Elantra N 2023. That's an amazing vehicle. I definitely recommend. Let's see. <laughs> um, Japan Quakes talking about Aussie shampoo. Someone said sidestep why it's not that high. Trust me. I take this car home for not this exact one frequently. I use a sidestep all the time. Yeah. I throw my bag in the back. It shifts over somewhere. Mm -hmm. I'm not like super, super tall. Like I use a side step to come grab it. Or when I'm harnessing stuff yeah. in, I little, need a little bit more leverage from the top instead of pulling it off the side and I'll strap it in from the top. So um, I do see a, a need for it. Cosmetically, that's up to you. I like the way they look. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had a buddy with, um, with a Ram and he was, we went for ice cream. We brought the kids and he was just mesmerized. He was just so shocked about the LED lighting in the back, the side steps, all the things that come standard, the cover. Um, yeah, blew his mind. He just wanted it to be a little bigger, but I like the size. You know what I will say? So I'm not a vehicle hater. I like all makes, models, manufacturers. But <laughs> that being said, when I'm thinking of trucks and I'm thinking of, I don't know, Ram, Chevy, whatever. Uh, if you're look, yeah, if you're looking at one at a decent price range, they usually don't have that many great features. Mm -hmm. It's more so just a truck. And if you're using it for truck things like pulling heavy trailers or doing lots of work where you need a full bed or you need tons of towing capacity, I understand that. But if you're just driving a truck for driving a truck, yeah. at least drive a truck that gives you some creature comforts as a good price point. Is it a complete pig on gas? Has good warranty? Is interesting to look at? Yeah, this is great on gas. I yeah. mean, at a heavy foot, 10.1 liters per 100 kilometers, city and highway mix. <laughs> I average this at around 7.8, 7.9 city and highway mix. So it's good on gas. Mm -hmm. I, I, I personally absolutely love the look. I think it looks you know, very traditional futuristic. I mean, you could put an Autobot sign on the front. Looks yeah. like it'll transform into a transformer. I just, and that, that, just that concept that follows, same with the Tucson, just those nice clean cut lines, that origami look. Yeah. Such a cool looking vehicle. Yeah. Their first truck, right? First truck. Like, 
So. Now, okay, this might be a little controversial, but I don't know if you guys heard Pat in earlier um, lives. I believe it was Monday or something. Uh, Kia will be releasing their own pickup truck in a couple of years. Will they? Yes. Oh, yeah, it's in the business see. plan. So we're excited to see what that's Because the Santa Cruz like. did so well? Yeah. Maybe? Yeah, the Santa Cruz um, has done well. Dale said $72,000 for a Lariat F-150 hybrid. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's quite the difference. This vehicle is priced at $47,099 Canadian, and yep. it's fully equipped. MSRP. It's pretty good. Um, let's see. Can't wait for the Kia truck. Me neither. I'm really, really excited to see what that's going to be like. You said a few years? Yeah. Maybe it'll be a hover truck by then. <laughs> who, knows, who knows where technology will be? Um, Ronak said, trucks are a waste of gas most of the time. And honestly, for a lot of people, yeah, unless you are using it for truck purposes every day, that's a lot of vehicle to be spending on gas. Yeah, I have a friend that drives a Ram 1500 and he works in an office. Yeah, so <laughs> that, unless you got money to spend and yeah. you just don't care, go for it. But I don't know, for me, mm. <laughs> I already get a little sad when I have to put gas in my Kia Forte, which is a very fuel efficient vehicle. Never mind a truck. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Uh, Gabby, when are you upgrading the Forte? I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I am very happy with my vehicle and I have no reason to sell it, but I do want something a little, a little more powerful. You said, Gabby, you're definitely rich. I'm definitely not. and. Ronak said I should drive a Prius. No. <laughs> we have one for sale at our dealership it's if you want to my, try it out. It's, not it's my blue. Thing. It's awesome. I have nothing against hybrids, <laughs> but I definitely have something against Priuses. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I have something against the size of it. Yes. <laughs> um, how much is the waiting period for the Kia Forte? So it greatly depends on what Forte you're looking for. Now, if it's an LX, EX, EX Plus, we can usually get them within a couple months. If you're really specific on a certain color, that might take a little bit longer to get, but yeah. Um, Sandeep, when does the 20, Tucson N-Line 2024 come on in Ontario? It's out. We filmed one. Yes. If you check our previous video, that was last week. And it's a hybrid. Yes. Yes. And it's a hybrid too, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. So check out our previous video. You've got all the specs there. Very different approach they took with the lineup of Tucson. Um, but I like it. I like it. And we might still have one at the dealership for a test drive. Mm -hmm. But these 24s, people want them yeah. before they even land. So... Um, Anthony said, tell us why this is better than the Ford Maverick. So the Ford Maverick you can get as just a regular gasoline vehicle, but it also comes as a hybrid. Um, I haven't checked into the wait times anytime recently, but I know at one point there was an excruciating long wait time to get a Maverick. So that might be a component in your search, might be. Um, stylistically or aesthetically, Santa Cruz looks way better. Way better. We had, a way yeah, better. <laughs> we had a Maverick. I didn't like the interior at all. Yeah, it's I didn't boring. like the design. Yeah, it's, it's up to you, right? Yeah, I just felt it was a little more, let's say, luxurious for a truck, right? Mm -hmm. This, um, yeah, we had a Maverick. It had a, it was a little bit modded, so I can't yeah. really judge on the drive because yeah. whoever had it before wanted this thing to be really loud. Uh. Um, but design-wise, personally, I don't like the Maverick. No, I'm not a like fan of the look. Looks. It's so boxy and not in a good way. No, so and most, I feel like most trucks are boxy, yeah. but it's just the front end is boxy and weird. And it's very, I don't know, I feel like styling wise, they did not hit it out of the park. Hyundai did though, not sponsored. Remember guys, I work for Kia. Yeah, um, <laughs> like the smallest Ford truck I'd go with used or whatever would, would be a, a Ranger or something like that. But like, if I'm gonna buy a truck for Ford, it's gonna be an F-150. Sorry, Mark just joined and he wants to see the bed of the vehicle. So I'm going to point off some of the standard features that come in the bed. And like I mentioned earlier, all the bed features are standard, except for this um, bed extender that is an accessory. So you get this durable composite material for your bed lining. It's completely waterproof or water resistant, I should say. No, waterproof. No. Um, very easy to wash, very easy to clean. There are six tie down points along the vehicle with four incorporated D rings. So you can see those around. Sorry, I'm zooming in. And I'm very bad at it. The D-rings also swivel, so depending on what you're tying down, you can really play around with it. Mike's demonstrating the rail and cleat system. So again, more tie down points. You can customize um, how deep you want them to be. So depending on what you're putting in here, you can make it work. The tunnel cover is, oh, <laughs> 
There we go. That's Spl as far as I'll go for now. Slidable and lockable, so you can lock it into place nice and easy. And it also holds up to 220 pounds. Yeah, that's your bed. It also has LED lighting. Uh, someone mentioned that it's a small bed, and yeah, it's a small truck. It's not a full yeah. three-quarter ton diesel truck with the towing capacity of if you make use of your pounds. yeah, if you make use of your Ram 1500, your F150, the whole size of the truck, this is not the car to to, to switch into the truck to switch into. It obviously yeah. has less room in the back. It's more functional for I guess day-to-day -day use and a little bit more. For me, it makes sense. I like to do a lot of my own home projects, rentals, stuff like that yeah. too, and it makes sense for me to have something like this and not blow a whole lot more money and, and money in gas and then maintenance to have something yeah. bigger. Um, it's a, it's really it's 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 a city truck for me. It's yeah. a nice city truck that you can take up north and you can uh, you could tear it up. You could really tear it up. I've driven it in sand, mud, everything. Yeah. Yeah. I think the key word is if you have a fifth wheel trailer, this is not the truck for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely not the truck for you. But if you have a small compact trailer, if you have a utility trailer you pull it around, if you're doing work around the house, if you do lots of yard work, a boat. Yeah, small yeah. boat, sea do stuff like that. This could be your truck, 5,000 pounds towing capacity, yeah. uh, fuel efficient. Never heard that in the word truck before, unless you're talking about. I mean, if you're looking <laughs> at a Maverick, come look at this before yeah. you buy the yeah, Maverick, please. right? Um, I think we'll end off today's live, just seeing as we are at the 41 minute mark. Now we have already filmed a couple videos of the Santa Cruz Ultimate. So if you want to see more, we've gotten that, don't worry. Mm -hmm. It's all here. Um, leave us questions down below if you do have anything that we couldn't answer during the live video. And we hope to see you again tomorrow. Goodbye for now.